the right place at the right time. I'm just going to go back to the, the scripture to begin with. Being in the right place at the right time can be very important. Now, it could be that the, Lord, the angel of the Lord will come down and, and, uh, on one of us uh, this afternoon and say, David Green is going to be in the Hyde Road in about half an hour. Would you go down there and talk some sense to him? <laughs> I don't think that's actually going to happen, though. That's not how it works for us in this day and age. But the Lord does keep putting us in the right place at the right time without us even knowing it. Here we have Philip, one of the disciples. It put, to put this in context, the earliest church in Jerusalem has just been broken up by Saul and others. And a lot of the church has spread out. Now that might seem a bad thing, but in part of God's plan, of course, it's always been intended that the church shouldn't stay in Jerusalem, but it should spread out eventually all over the world. So Philip has been out, he has been preaching uh, the word of God, he's been uh, preaching the good news about Jesus Christ uh, in the broader area. Just before this says the instance of Simon the sorcerer, who thought he could buy the Holy Spirit, that was roundly told, no you can't. But now, uh, Philip is told to go to a particular place where we will find an important man on the road. Initially he's not told why he's been sent there, but he goes anywhere. And this uh, Ethiopian is a very important official. Uh, he's the uh, keeper of the buddies uh, for the uh, Queen of the Ethiopians, which is a very wealthy area at this time because it produces gold. Uh, most of the gold in Egypt came from Ethiopia. And it, it co Ethiopia covers a uh, broader area than modern Ethiopia, most of the Horn of Africa. So this important official had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he's going home, back home, it says a chariot, it doesn't mean, don't, don't think Ben Hur, and that sort, it's not that sort of chariot, it just means it, it would be any sort of wheeled vehicle. Probably quite comfortable if he's the keeper of the buddies. Not going to stick, is he? Uh, and he's sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. <laughs> and like any of us, when we were new Christians, we read passages in the Bible and didn't understand them. He needs some explanation. So the Spirit tells Philip, go to that chariot and stay there. So he goes to the chariot, he goes to the vehicle, he uh, sees and hears. Uh, the, you know, the official uh, reading Isaiah and uh, you know, asks, you know, he starts a conversation, do you understand what, what you're reading? Uh, to which his uh, uh, reply comes in, oh, no. uh, I need someone to explain it to him. So he invites Philip to explain it to him. Philip's in the right place at the right time to do this explanation. And it just so happens, right place, right time, that the piece of scripture that the eunuch was reading was a, a prophecy about the coming of Jesus Christ, the coming of our Lord. So Philip was able to take this, to use it, and to introduce uh, the uh, uh, use of that passage of scripture to introduce the uh, high official to the good news about Jesus. Having heard this and having received the explanation, what do you know? It just so happens that they're passing water. This is a desert road, remember, so uh, it's not that far, few and far between. Look, says you know, here's water. Uh, what can stand in the way of my being baptized? Well, nothing, obviously. So he was on to stop the chariot. Philip takes him down to, to the water and baptizes him. And when he's done that, he's, he's finished the Lord's work here. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord, it says, takes him away, takes him to uh, several tens of miles away to another, uh, uh, another uh, small town. And 
You didn't see him again, but it says it went, he went on his way rejoicing. He's had his revelation. All this about being in the right place at the right time. We don't know most of the time if we're in the right place at the right time in the context of our witness. And our witness can be by words, our witness can be, be by deeds. You simply do not know if you're in the right place at the right time. You actually have to assume that you are. That any meeting that you have with someone who is not churched or is uh, not a fellow Christian is an opportunity to witness. Which is not to say you shouldn't witness to fellow Christians as well, but in this context we're, we're talking about people who haven't yet come to Jesus. It could be a prolonged engagement. You might meet someone, you might have the opportunity then to talk to them, and then a further opportunity to talk to them, because people usually, not always, but usually, don't come to Jesus just like that. It usually takes some time to bring them to Jesus. So it could be that. Then again, it might not be. It might be a single encounter. It might be a single encounter in which your words or your deeds or your example, even though you don't meet that person again, can have consequences in the future. Because it's, a, again, it's a cumulative effect. I might say something, you might say something, somebody else might say something, and eventually the message gets home because people do go away and usually it's when they're, they've got troubles in their life and they think, oh, yes, that was a sensible comment. Obviously it wasn't the one from me, but no, no. <laughs> that's the way it comes. There's a concept of paying onward as well. The, uh, the idea is that uh, if you meet, you know, if a stranger does a kindness to you, you know, for me, you know, I, I, I used to stop, uh, well, I still would, I suppose, but it doesn't have to be, but you know, I'd stop at the side of the road if I saw somebody with a broken down car, uh, come and have a look, to, uh, can, we, can we have a look together, do you need some help, uh, can we make a phone call for you, or whatever. Never going to meet that person again. And people will say, well, thank you ever so much. Uh, you know, how can I repay you? And my, my reply, as and many others, will just say, you don't have to thank me. Just do a favour for somebody else in the future. Pay the favour onwards. I can remember uh, a, a situation uh, there was a young family had moved into Ashford, uh, came to the attention of Eric and Hermione. Uh, they just moved into a new council house. They had literally no money because having moved, their, their, their benefits were all going to get transferred and they were in a temporary hiatus where they had no money. Uh, they're into a new, uh, moving into a new uh, small house. Uh, so of course Eric and I went round and helped. This is a single encounter type because it didn't uh, come to, to church as a result, didn't expect that. You know, I, I managed to connect the gas oven uh, and uh, Eric and I bought them enough uh, groceries to see them through the week till their benefits came through. So that was that was witness by action, wasn't it? We, we, we didn't spend a great deal of time talking about God or anything like that. I mean, we said we'd come to the local church, but that 
It was a case of witnessing by action. It's a case of a secret encounter, which we hope and pray will then be remembered and adds up with other things to bring people to God. I can remember another occasion. I got to France for a shopping trip. Uh, this is the days before COVID, days before we left the EU, and it was worthwhile going to the shops in, in France. And there were a group of people outside the supermarket where well, I pulled up. Uh, they were obviously asylum seekers. Uh, they were asking for uh, food. And whatever you think about immigration and asylum, nobody ought to go hungry. So I had a lot of cash on me because it was a, I was going on a shopping uh, trip. Uh, so I, I gave uh, one of the chaps uh, 50 euros, which was enough to buy shopping for a family for a week. Uh, he was very grateful and he thanked me publicly. So publicly I was able to say, C'est simplement mon devoir chrétien. That's simply my Christian duty. So that was a chance that I got uh, to witness, in, well, not just in front of the asylum seekers, because he didn't even sign the shop near the tills, but to everybody else in the shop. A single engagement. But one that we hope could have the right effects in the future. Yes, the idea is that you will be able to bring uh, someone closer to God by talking to them over a period. But it may not be that. And that means that you should always seize on any opportunity and take it because you don't know what the consequences of your act are going to be. You can tell the immediate consequences, but you have no idea whether you are going to be that little pedal that starts the avalanche. So, Philip never saw the, uh, the high official, the eunuch, again. But we're told that he went on his way rejoicing. So I think we can assume that that was one of those pebble and avalanche moments as the, this high official and important man went to his own country and will tell people about his experience and therefore spread the word. And now we're going to...